So it's Monday, welcome to Twackalicious. Uh, after a nice busy weekend, I'm not so hungover anymore after the rugby, so that's the good news. I look a little bit human today. Uh, quite busy as per usual. We've got some interesting car in the workshop actually. It's an Alfa Romeo Giulia. I've always been a big fan of these vehicles, but Jonas is just going to explain the reason why I've selected it to be our service centre car of the week. So if we just wander over. Jonas, why is this our selected car of the week? What's going on? What are you doing with it? So it is in for an interim service, an MOT. Cool. Um, but before we can MOT it, um, customers made us aware that the near side front headlamp, the indicator doesn't work and it's LED. So unfortunately, okay. it will need a whole new headlamp to replace it. So there's a story with this headlamp. How long did it take? I think it's several weeks, wasn't it? Several weeks? Yeah. And um, we're going to do a pause. I want everyone either to comment or to guess how much they think just the near side headlight was. Well, I hope that's it. Jonas, do yeah. you remember how much was it? Uh, fitted price Here we go. is £1,989.78. So fitted. A lot. <laughs> and um, obviously we should add most of that's the price of the headlight um, yeah as good as Jonas is he can't charge that much on his labor yeah. um what how much you reckon how much the light was 16 it 17 be, it's probably like hour and a half or two hours labor so so take take probably 120 quid, quid yeah. 150 quid off so literally yeah. the, that is outrageous it is yeah and all it is for an indicator as well yeah indicator and side light so it's run off the same led so um uh, I assume the modules failed because of the condensation inside the headlamp. Yeah. So um, I'd be worried about this one because yeah, one's it's, going it's doing the same, the same thing. Um, however, I did notice the the rubber cap, the back of the headlight, wasn't attached on that side. So it's probably oh. uh, one of the reasons why it's failed prematurely. So someone's had it off before and not fitted it back on. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, oh. just to do a headlamp so bolt. That shows you. I re not saying whoever did it previous probably wouldn't have been a good garage, but. Trying to skimp with someone who might not do the job properly will cost you. Also, there was two two bolts missing on the headlamp. It was held on by one bolt. Yeah, so, so um, someone's been there before. So uh, trying to skimp and save isn't always the right way. Is this poor owners had to endure? Really, that's quite astonishing. Really, um, you own an Alpha, don't you, Harry? So how are your headlights looking? <laughs> uh, I got them replaced. Oh, like a few months ago. How much were they weren't 1900 quid? No, just bulbs. No, just, just, just bulbs, okay. Oh, there we, yeah, that's the issue with LEDs, isn't it? Well, there we go, that's our service centre car of the week. Right, just had to warm up then a little bit. Just feel a bit frosty this morning, Harry, you know? Oh, <laughs> you might actually pick my back up on the mic. If you did, I. Should we just roll with this, I think? Because this is actually what it's like in the life of a car dealership. We try and have an unedited, sort of not polished edition. This is it. It's February the 14th. That means one and one thing only, Harry. It's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone at home, our viewers, our lovers around the world unite. Um, make love, not war, isn't it? Or something like that? Yeah. So anyway. Uh, speaking about love, we're having a lovely time in the business. A uh, bit of an update, we touched on the 440i, two series is sold. I sold the A-Class, um, when did I sell that? A couple of days ago, I think. CX, uh, CX, Citroen uh, C3, five, five, four, in the middle. <laughs> we'll get, get there in the end. CX3 is sold, we could have sold that about six times. Twingo's actually back on the front. Timmy Maddox, you've lost your touch. Don't know what happened there. But apparently that was the one Tim sold and it's back on the forecourt. So uh, no comment though, because I do quite enjoy my job. Uh, what else have we got, Harry? We've had some cars in. Fiat 500's new. Skoda Superb. This is a 4x4, this one. Lovely car, this. Big fan. I'm not going to add me as a big fan again. I might do, actually. Really clean car, that. Uh, what else have we had? That Focus ST's in. I will do a video on that, just to see if it can change my mind on them. I'm not convinced. Verso's brand new, we've got someone on that as well. So in terms of where we are, we are apparently not, not very busy. Um, but we've sold six, 
uh, this week already, so we're absolutely flying. Alhambra, just advertised, really nice car this. This might be the highlighted stock of the week. Oh, quick, have a look, have a look. We're dehumidifying. There's a dehumidifier in the back. Seven seats, twin sliding doors. It's got three-way climate control, so the kids in the back can have their own climate control. Electric seats, heated seats, reverse camera, nav, Bluetooth, dab, cruise control, you name it. Pan roof as well that slides. It's got full main dealer service history up to now. We've just done a service on it. I think three owners from new, I think. It's just a great car. I won't be around for long. But yeah, we're dehumidifying as we speak. We've had a bit of a full court shuffle round. Eco Sport. I'll add some videos of this one because Rob has done a ceramic on it. You, you'll be able to pick up on it here, Harry, actually, how good this car looks. It's so clean and bright now, lovely colour contrast. We mentioned, that I think, last twat that was in the workshop. So, again, I reckon the average, over the last two weeks, our average days advertised must be well under a week. Honestly, it's, it's astonishing at the moment. Um, Aston Martin is giving me a video on that probably live tomorrow. I had quite an enjoyable day out filming that one. Let's see what the service team have got in. Elliot's on MOTs, trying to get something through emissions. Tim's hands on, exhausts. Right, what have we got then? Yard update, let's have a look. Oh, B-Class, bought this in part exchange against the silver B-Class I sold. Lovely couple, if they're watching the video, hello, thank you so much, amazing deal. Had good fun talking with you about your churd your journey they travel loads very jealous they've visited probably every country under the sun we do have a really nice addition that i want to show to you four series is new in took that part exchange against an evoke lovely color that i'm not sure if it's been bmw individual but really bright looking color that we've got some tasty bits here um this is really nice actually really impressed with this car um I think we're trading it though, it's a bit new for us, but really impressed. Defender, have a look at this. What an absolute weapon. It's a good looking car, Harry, isn't it? It's nice, I like it. And the Focus RS in nitrous blue. What a colour. They've just nailed it, haven't they? They had nitrous blue and then the previous generation to this was green. I can't remember which green it was, but they, they, they nailed the launch color on these cars. They are absolutely brilliant. Great fun, these cars. I was slagging off a Focus ST, but the RS is a completely different ball game, um, mainly because it's four wheel drive with a little, so you can slip it into rear wheel drive and get some hoonage if you want. That's it for an update. Oh, two things I want to touch on. Me and Harry are going to introduce you to a new shooting location we found that's up by the Ebola drone. So I'm as close to getting to Top Gear as I'll ever be. Um, it, was, it was Grand Tour there, wasn't it? Same thing, isn't it? It's, it's all the same at that point. And me and Tim are on a supercar tour in June, which we haven't mentioned yet. So we'll probably do a little taste to touch on on that a bit later on in the video, I think. That's it for a midweek update. A bit late this week, because we've been really busy, but there we go. So, highlighted service center tool of the week. Jonas is just fiddling with, actually. Um, we had a Kia Rio in for an MT. It's failed. What has the vehicle failed on? It's failed on TPMS system malfunctioning. Uh, so, basically, one of the sensors not working. Okay. Um, which is an MOT failure. Yeah. Um, so this tool uh, allows me to scan individual sensors and tell me if the battery life's okay or if they are sending a signal. And I've already scanned the vehicle and as you can see, the driver's rear sensor's not working. So okay. we'll be replacing the sensor today. Do you want to, yeah, how does it, how does it work recessive. though? Yeah, how does it actually work, Jonas? Just to, just to be nosy really, okay, mate. So, it sends a signal to a receiver in the vehicle. Um, individual sensors have a unique code which needs to be programmed into the car so it knows yeah. which wheel is uh, what. So yeah. um, that's what I'm going to do next. And, okay. Uh, so what you, what, you put it next to? Yeah, so, so I'll be just pressing a button. It'll pick up the frequency and the unique code and the battery life. Cool. And it'll tell me if everything's okay. 
so you can reset. Can you program? Like you say, you can program, health check. Yeah, so I can health check the battery like inside the sensors yeah. and I can, uh, I can actually program individual nice. sensor into the ECU, so. How would you, if you didn't have this, how would you check? Would you just have to replace and? You actually, you can't, be, you can't roll, really. you roll the dice. Yeah, so, so not everyone have the tool, so you, you have to have this tool to actually program sure. them and check the condition. You might be able to check it on a diagnostics for uh, on the live data. Yeah. But it's not always. It accurate. might indicate offside rear, and it, would it? Yeah, it, it okay. might not actually pick it up. You know. Cool. Mm -hmm. And t are they expensive to replace? So they're about ninety pounds fitted. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And you just just this one would need doing. I guess yeah. the other ones are healthy. Yeah. Every, everything else has come back okay, so we'll just be replacing the one today. Cool. Well, that's our highlighted tour of the week. So welcome to Twack. This is our new location. Harry, if you just have a quick look through, um, there was a security man who wasn't very happy with us, but um, I scared him off uh, and he's gone now, so we're all safe. But thank you for checking. We're not breaking and entering. Um, we are at the probably the closest, like I said, I'll ever be to Top Gear or the Grand Tour. This is a secret location um, just past Alexandra Park in Rawton, about two and a half minutes past there, about five minutes from the dealership. Just go up Brimble Hill, keep going up, go right up to the top, take a right through Alexandra Park and here we go. So this is an old hangar, as you can clearly see. So in World War II, I believe, there was a big air base up in Rawton. There's a couple actually. The truck school's here, so I don't want to wander in. They do some bits here. There's a uh, bike, um, a bike thing as well. But Harry, if you, do you want to come up, you can get a nice good view up here, mate. Come on up with me. Do you need a hand up or you're right? So you've got some more newer hangers over there. And I believe this is where they were filming the Grand Tour. So this is the Ebola drone or some of it. So um, this is quite nice. It's like we're doing a little adventure, isn't it? Look at this here. I'm having <laughs> too much fun at work. <laughs> right. Oh my God, flipping mess. Yeah, so this is it. So we're doing some more shooting up here in terms of the cars, because I think it's a really nice backdrop. There's another really big hangar just there. That road goes all the way down there for about another half a mile onto the lower part of the runway. There's loads of stuff that way. It's actually, it's actually huge up here, which is quite surprising. Um, this is it. So this is a bit of a, an interesting, cool, funky uh, new shooting, uh, I guess, location for us. I quite enjoy being up here. It's only five minutes from work, so it's not too far out of the way. But as you can see, Harry, they, they look absolutely mint just here, shot up against the... Tim wasn't convinced, but... I'm, I'm convinced on it, so until he tells me otherwise, we're doing it here. Anyway, that's twack. Right, so Friday, just want to close the week up. It's been a pretty successful week in truth. I've just wrapped a deal up on the S2000. Very sad to see this beauty go. Really nice gentleman. We got on like a house on fire. We were talking and chatting about S2000s all day. He had one. It's the only car he's ever regretted selling and he's owned some good motors, which just goes to show how good these cars are. Jack's filming, we've done 30 this month? 30. 30, so we're on to an absolute flyer. It's been really good for, I guess, February's been an absolute stunner for us, so hopefully we can just keep the ball rolling. Craig's just come back in, Greg's RS6. How's it looking? Beautiful. Greg, obviously <laughs> you're gonna be watching this. How, how big a bank roll does he need now? Who, Greg? Yeah. Um, Infinite pockets? Infinite pockets, Greg. Infinite pockets. Yeah. 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 Anyway, less of that. Um, we touched on the Mega Run. So as we mentioned, me and Tim are going to be doing a Mega Run, which is almost like a gumball thing. But it's a really big, it's a 25-year, or oh, I might have made that up. Hold on. It's a big anniversary run for them. Can't remember how long it is. Anyway, it's a big anniversary run. So just to give you an insight, we're going to be starting in London. We go through to Belgium, Ansi, Saint-Tropez, Milan, Lake Como, Stelvio Pass, right the way through the Alps to end in Innsbruck. So it's a week long tour. It's going to be absolute chaos. I don't know what we're doing it in yet. We haven't bought a car. Tim's teeter on, on the idea of a couple of things. I'd like a GT4 personally, but it isn't my business or my money to make the decision. So that's going to be done in June. We're obviously going to be videoing that and taking you along, which is going to be 
pretty interesting, I think. That's going to be a really good, fun tour. A little bit expensive, I think. So I need to start putting away the pounds and the pennies now. But I hope you enjoyed it. That's been Twack. <laughs>